You know, some people believe in this thing called karma. A system of checks and balances. The idea that every action a person commits is remembered by the powers that be. People who do good things in life can be rewarded in the same consideration they decided to show the world. It's a great system, in my opinion. Not only does it reward the deserving, it punishes those who don't take their life seriously. For every evil action, there is an equal reaction, and the universe never forgets anything. Hell would be unleashed on you all at once. Most people get at least a chance at some form of retribution. But what happens when the accused has no intentions of redeeming themselves? Our story tonight is that of a man who believes he has done no wrong in the wake of his actions. Malcolm Decker is a 27-year-old whose level of confidence has rose to that of being hubris. He only realizes what's happening when the gears of reaction have already begun to turn. You know, I don't see you coding at all hours of the night for some fake deadline. It's not a fake deadline, Malcolm. It's a very real deadline. Yeah, but we own the company. What are we going to do if we miss it by a day or two? Uh, fire ourselves? Malcolm, it's all about the perception of being an actual business. Okay, what you do and what I do are two very different things. You're here to make sure that we're making some money, and I'm here to make sure that we're turning a profit. You know, the last time I checked, we're both pretty comfortable. I have no idea what you're complaining about. You know, I pay my bills. And yet you still live in a dingy River West apartment. You know, I happen to like my crappy River West apartment. It's cozy, and it's been my home for five years. And I cringe every time you bring a girl home from the bar to your cozy little apartment. I can hear him right now. Oh, you, you live here? Uh... Nobody, no woman has ever said that. They say it's quaint, they say it's cozy. I've never heard a complaint. Yes, to your face, I guarantee they jump on Facebook right after and tell all of their friends about your small apartment. Yeah, choose your words very carefully, my friend. I'm not above pulling over and whipping your bottom like some piece of street trench. <laughs> all of a sudden, we've got Hulk Hogan over here, is that right? Don't call me Macho Man Malcolm Decker, brother. <laughs> oh, hey. Look, a garage sale, let's check it out. Are you serious? You're, you're really gonna bring more junk into your cozy little apartment? Come on, let's just check it out. I don't know why I'm here. It's because you're too big of a jerk to have actual friends. Plus, I make a great wingman. This is true, very, very true. What did I tell you? Look at all this crap. You could have just waited in the car. And you could have just kept driving. We didn't need to stop. I don't know. What's another ten minutes out of your life? Another ten minutes? I'm closer to my own death? Can I help you, gentlemen? Victoria? Malcolm? Oh my gosh. It's been... Ten years. Yeah. Yeah, I've been alright. I uh, started my own company with this idiot here. Uh, Going pretty well. How are you doing? Finished school a few years ago, and I'm uh, working down at the bank. Hi, Xander. Victoria, is it? Oh, stop it. I was only saying hello. Ignore my friend. Mom issues. Yes, I did have issues with your mom last night. So, uh, what circumstances uh, have you here? Remember my mother? Yeah, I remember her scaring the crap out of me and the neighbor kids. We really thought she was a witch. Was she? No, just extraordinarily eccentric. She became a bit of a hoarder over the years. But Mom finally agreed to go to the home, so... Well, she always laid claim to every piece of uh, athletic equipment I left in her yard. Believe it or not, she still had all that stuff. 
I ended up donating it. Don't think people are interested in newspapers from 1993. If you'll just excuse me for a moment. Xander, check out this phone. It's a crappy old phone. It's an antique. This will look great in my house. Yeah, you can just add it to the rest of the useless garbage you have in there. Come on, let's go. Fifty bucks? Thank you can just give me the fifty dollars and it'll accomplish the same thing. Come on, let's no, get no, out of here. Sh 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 run interference. Are you serious? That shit knows you. You owe me. You owe me. Victoria, right? Xander, you know, you look great in that old shirt there. Have you ever seen a movie before? That's a great name. Oh, I thought you said it's high. I like, maybe more. Well, either way, it's going to be fun, man. You ready? Yeah. Hello? Welcome. 
You have to listen to me. This is how it all starts. Please, Malcolm. This is your only chance. Malcolm. Anger, greed, sloth, pride, lust, envy, and gluttony. The seven deadly sins. It seems our friend Malcolm has embarked on a journey. A journey that will take him beyond the reaches of his own reality and into a world of terror. Soon, the walls of reality will come crashing down. Malcolm's sanity will be tested as he has been chosen. Chosen to suffer for his crimes and an inability to feel sympathy. Time itself has been affected in a way that may very well consume our protagonist. What lessons will be offered and what knowledge will Malcolm retain? What evil forces are at work? I must say though, it sure is fun watching them all suffer. Piece of crap! Oh, you look like crap. What was your name? <laughs> no, my car broke down on my way to work. I had to leave it there. I walked here. Oh, what happened? It just overheated. I haven't. I have no idea. I just. I just said uh, I'll just deal with it later. It wasn't even that far of a walk. I mean, how could you be exhausted? We weren't even out that late last night. Something really, really weird happened to me last night, and it has to do with the phone that I took. The phone that you stole? Okay, well, what happened to the phone? What's wrong with the phone? It rang. The phone rang? The phone... I, I don't know how else to describe it. It rang. Okay, well, who was on the other end? I don't know. It, it, it sounded like... It sounded like me. It sounded like you? It sounded like I was... trying to tell me something. Like, this is where it all starts. And then just... kept going. All right, uh, so you answered the old phone and it was yourself and you were talking to yourself? I, listen, that sounds nuts. I, I don't know either. It was some kind of warning, but I'm just, I just, car broke down, I need to take a day. I need to take a day, just mental health. You know, do what you have to do, man, take your day. Did you want to get some lunch? <laughs> well, actually, me and Victoria have a date, if you happen to remember her. So you tell me it's not okay to steal uh, the phone, but you can steal her heart. 
<laughs> Just keeping up the illusion, my friend. Keeping up the illusion. You take care of yourself, okay? Screw it. I'm going to the bar. Hey, man, you watching this? This kid's great, man. He's doing great this year. He's up to, like, 30, 35 home runs, man. He's going to be a star next year when he gets a new contract. You know, uh, sports are for people without degrees so they can feel like they know something. Excuse me? You heard me. No, I actually, uh, I didn't hear you. That's, that's the whole problem there. Could you, could you repeat yourself for me? So that sports are for people without degrees so they can feel like they know something about something. You saying I'm dumb? I'm not saying anything, man. No, I, I think you are, actually. I think you're saying I'm dumb. What makes you so special? Pretty well off. I asked you a question, boy. What makes you so special? Well, I'm not you. What? You want to say that's my face? I'm special because I'm not you. Call me dumb? I probably venture that. Oh! You're not looking too well, Malcolm. Are you all right? I I'm not all right. This is not all right. The phone! Something is going on with the phone! The phone didn't do anything to you. We got really drunk last night. You ended up hurting your hand. I didn't hurt my hand. The phone hurt my hand. The, the phone's not doing anything to you, Malcolm. I bring it home. I put it on the table. I sit down. It rings. I answer it. Trouble fills my life. That phone over there? That phone? That, that phone is cursed. That garbage phone you picked up from the garage sale? Are you Xander. kidding me? You it's cursed. Me? You mean this garbage phone over here? Xander, this no. Phone over here. Do this not touch that oh, phone. Touch it. Put it down. Big deal. What's Put the big it down. problem? What is wrong with you? Are you one of them? What did you what do you this to me? About, man? Who Calm did down. this to me? Come Calm on, down. tell me. What are you doing, Malcolm? No, what? No, no, stop, no, don't! You're in on this. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, I planned on doing that already. He's earned it. Oh. I have to go. Sorry about that. Making some plans for later. It seems things turned out rather morbid for our dear friend Malcolm. The simple allure of an easy crime granted the universe a reason to exact revenge on this poor soul. Hopefully you, the viewer, have learned something. What goes around comes around, and it can smack you pretty hard when it comes back around.